for some reason you play FPSs just to watch good bars go up. You like seeing your friends topped off and get high off the rush of desperately keeping everyone's limbs attached in high dangerous situations. That or you enjoy the novelty of selecting healer and watching your foes die before they can criticize your decisions. Well, it must be Christmas because people are already setting up decorations and field medics got you covered. With buffs for your allies and damage for yourself, the only thing stopping you now is your fear of being the most important person on the team. Symbiotic. Right off the bat, we don't want you running away from your duties as the only healer in the game, so we've upped your health a bit and made the elation from healing so powerful that it actually recovers a portion of your HP every time you do it. Which is probably why you are always going to be the last one standing. I got The last one left. What?! <laughs> but I promised buffs to those cadavers handcuffed to your ankles, didn't I? Well, they better undead themselves because the next three skills are about improving their capabilities. Oh, and don't worry, my depressed healer friend. These buffs apply to anyone healed by you. That means you take part in these benefits whenever you heal yourself off of someone else's suffering or give yourself a good old poke. Mmm. Adrenaline shot grants increased speed, focus injection increases damage, and coagulant booster ups defense. All of these buffs last for 5 seconds and you can stack their effect up to 3 or 4 times depending on the buff. Now you may be wondering, what the heck and heck is Field Medic gonna do with their Zed Time ability? Shoot even more darts that do zero damage? Of course not! I can't believe you'd suggest such a stupid- You huffed some healing gas before the game started, and it turns out you are intolerant to both lemons and mint, so now whenever Zed Time is triggered, you fart out a cloud of healy goodness that your friends can't get enough of and Zeds die from the sheer scent of. That or it's the lemons and mint. Now your weapons are... weird. Just anything that's weird. To start off, we have the HRG Health Thrower. You spray out a constant stream of healing gas that will cake your allies' gaping wounds as well as dissolve any Zeds unfortunate enough to be in front of you. I I'm healing him really oh good. My God. Oh, and you have a healing dart. The high tick rate of the gas's healing allows for quick stacking of your buffs. Combine that with the Berserker's durability and you've got yourself an unstoppable duo. Until a husk shows up. Though if you'd rather inflict ailments over buffs, we have the Hemogoblin. This device fires literal drills at the enemy that bore into their flesh and cause the bleeding debuff. While their blood is being evicted from their body, they move slower, swing slower, hit softer, and are more susceptible to concussions. Oh wow, you shoot healing darts too! But wouldn't you rather fire healing javelins instead? With the HRG incision, you substitute the standard healing dart with a spear of healing goodness. Although it cannot home like the healing dart, the healing on the incision can pierce through allies and enemies, as well as lock onto its target if you are scoped in. And don't worry, the primary fire on this weapon has its power as well. You fire high damaging shots that inflict the EMP status effect, preventing enemies from using their abilities. With this weapon's accuracy and high zoom scope, you'd assume you should treat it like a sniper rifle. Though as you'll find out when I cover Sharpshooter, my personal preference is to treat snipers as if they were shotguns. Lastly, we have the HRG Vampire. This modified husk cannon siphons the blood straight out of the enemy's pores before lobbing it back at them and magically killing them with their own STDs. Holding down left click activates your BIG SUCK, which doesn't consume ammo unless it's actively dealing damage. Once your ball is nice and plump, you can release your trigger finger to poison Zeds and heal allies. <laughs> And unlike all of the other medic weapons, your middle mouse doesn't fire life-bringing suffering. Instead, you fire a crystallized shard of blood that gives this weapon the vaguest sense of long-range viability. Oh, and before we continue, it's worth noting that the blood balls and medinade explosions are not bound by the laws of solid matter and can affect targets on the other side of doors. But there aren't any doors on Dissector for me to demonstrate. There is a floor, though. Battle Surgeon. You've cast aside the Hippocratic Oath and have decided that doing harm is far more entertaining. <laughs> Starting things off is a passive damage resistance that increases depending on how low your HP is. This is amazing for when you abandon your medic duties and go see which wins in rock, paper, scissors. Gunstock or chainsaw? The, the answer is chainsaw. And if you have balls of vibranium, you can start your rounds with lower HP to increase your resistance and min-max your armor consumption. But not everything is about being tanky, so your next skill increases your mag size and spikes your water with espresso so you have extra movement speed. But this is the DPS tree. Surely we need some damage in here. Well, fret not, because the next skill coats your bullets in a poison far more powerful than whatever your healing darts do. And if that isn't enough, the skill afterwards increases your damage by a fat 20%. Oh. That's still not enough for you? 
Well, let me introduce you to Zedative. While in Zed time, your weapons deal even more damage, and when they remove a Zed's unfortunate face from this reality, their bodies will start hemorrhaging healing juice, which is lethal to the Zeds around them and can cause some satisfying chains. For your death-bringing devices, you use all of the comparatively normal weapons. Basically anything with HM Tech in front of it, which either stands for Horzine Medical Technologies or Hemorrhoid Multiplier Technique. I'm not quite sure which one. You start off by purchasing the cheapest medic weapon, the HM Tech 201 SMG. For the cheapest weapon, the SMG has a noteworthy amount of damage. On top of being a prime squishy extinguisher, you can also use Middle Mouse Bun to fire a healing dart, preferably at allies. Up next, we have the Hmm Tech 301 Shotgun. This mag-fed buckshot is most proficient at taking down battos bigger than you. A nice change from the spray and prey of the SMG. Oh, and you can healing dart too. Of course. And then we have the SMG-401 Assault Rifle. Like other ARs, you can fire in full auto and hit middle mouse too. Oh. Right. HM- Oh, whatever. You get the idea. The 501 Grenade Rifle fires similarly to the Assault Rifle, but with the added bonus of replacing the healing darts with an underbarrel that launches mini medi nades. Much like its predecessor, the most powerful grenade in the game, these nades are proficient at getting you out of a pinch, as well as removing the pinches in question. And while I was recording this, I actually discovered something magical. The grenades fired by the 501 do damage on impact and can stumble enemies, which I find to be most amusing. If my character would stop reloading and covering my screen! Though it does have its limitations. <laughs> Unless you're me. Oh my god, why is there so many quarter pounds everywhere? <laughs>